So this is a really good little tip for if you're using polyurethane glue. The downside of polyurethane glue is the amount of glue squeeze you get from it when you've assembled the joint, clamped it, and then it continues to puff glue out of all the joint before it goes off. So we'll get straight to it. This is the joint. I've got a little beveled scribe over the bevel on the rails. They just slot together, so it's a blind tenon in sort of a very standard cupboard door sort of joint. And I've set the bottom of this joint depth using the router bit that I discovered worked really well for setting the bottom of the haunch depth. So if you've not checked that video out, go and have a look at that one because that's another game-changing little tip for this type of joint. So what I tend to do with polyurethane glue is I don't glue every part of both sides of the joint. So I'll take my PU glue and in the mortise I'll do a, a thin bead each side. Then on the rails I'll just put a bead the same on the flat of the tenons. So then I use a spatula to spread the glue. But before doing that, the important step here to stop the glue squeeze is to use a cork of some kind. I'm using this white stick tool, but it's actually an adhesive and sealant in itself. So I put a, just a blob of that on the inside edges of anywhere you don't want to get any glue squeeze. Now, because that's an adhesive in itself, it will actually help to bond that joint together, but what it does is stops the expansion of the PU glue spreading out the end of the joint where you've applied that sealant. And then I just get a liberal coating on all the end grain. So I find it does tend to suck up the end grain a little bit, but that's where PU glue is at an advantage to traditional runny glues. Traditional runny glues can actually completely absorb into the end grain. So I find you get a much stronger joint with PU glue. The only problems you get are the fact it's really messy if you get it on your hands or on your work and it starts spreading everywhere and the glue squeeze is quite difficult to clean off. So your joint before you glue it together should look a little bit like this. So you've pretty much got glue on all the faces of the tenon and covered it liberally on the end grain. And then in the mortise housing here, I just use something of a similar size to the mortise and just work that up and down the sides of the housing. Generally, a pencil or dowel, just a, a millimetre smaller than the housing is perfect because the rounded edges help to spread the glue. Now don't put any on the tops here because all that does is encourages too much glue squeeze. So I get asked in every single video what brand of polyurethane glue I recommend. What I will say is they're all, they are all slightly different and it depends on what I want to achieve from the glue as to which brand I use. But in general, the Woodweld adhesive from construction chemicals is, is pretty much my favorite go-to adhesive. I always go for the 30 minute. In the perfect conditions, this stuff has still gone off in about five minutes. So it's just uh, a little bit slower than the other stuff. As I pull the joint together, you should see the glue squeeze eliminated by that corking and you'll only get glue squeeze on the parts where it's easy to sand off. So the clamps are up nice and tight here. So what the sealant does is creates like a, a blockade for the glue. The glue is actually quite soft and it only finds the easiest route out of the piece of timber. So if you've got that quite sticky adhesive at the edge of the joint, it finds a different route out from the joint. Because this is painted, just a really simple clean off. I like these tiny little wedges. These are the best ones I've found. I'll put a link in the description. I can't exactly remember what brand they are, so I'll find out and put that in the description for you. Got a really nice tapered edge to them. Perfect for going around curved moldings. And they're dead cheap. And then just a, a builder's wipe and wipe it into a builder's wipe and you get an absolutely perfect corked internal joint that is, is just basically completely ready for paint straight away. No cleaning up required at all. So just to show as an example, on this one I will do the corking on one joint then I'll leave the other one without any. So if we watch this joint as it goes together, We'll see the glue squeeze is eliminated by that corking we've put in the corner. And we only get glue squeeze 
on the top of the joint where it's nice and easy to clean off. I can pretty much now just paint straight onto that internal corner and I'll get a really nice finish. Whereas the other joints with the PU glue, we've only got a very modest amount of glue squeeze there. It's still a pain, so you can't really clean that off when it's wet because it leaves a residue. Whichever method you're using, you're going to be doing some form of cleanup anyway. So I just prefer the fact that this has stopped the glue from squeezing out and the glue is the problem part, especially with PU glue. No matter how much you clean and wipe it off, it always expands a little bit more and leaves a residue. And if I zoom the camera back in on that joint that I can just spray now with a couple of coats of paint, D-nib and I've got my finished cabinet. Whereas the likes of this joint here, I've got to really carefully trim that glue off now. Once it's dried, so I've got to wait, take it off the bench while I glue the others up, then put it back on to clean that piece of glue. At which point you've used a lot of time and also run the risk of if you're corking joints afterwards that it's quite a weak thing to do. You're only putting a bit of stuff on the surface. Whereas if it's actually within the joint itself, you've got a nice strong bond for the filler or cork that you used. If you use a MS polymer adhesive to do this, which I'd recommend, it also sticks the wood together and waterproofs the joint. So yeah, like I say, it's not detrimental to the joint, but it completely enhances the quality of the finish and the speed of getting to that finish. And that glue squeeze is gone and nobody likes cleaning expanded PU glue off a set or finished glued door. The joy on this type of construction method is that I only need two sets of clamps really. I can take one off the bench, clean the other side, corner joints out. And then the door that I glued up previously, I can put straight back on the bench because the glue sets so quickly. Undo the clamps and that's that job done. So I hope you found this one useful. I'm going to carry on gluing, but this technique is literally useful for anything you're gluing up, whether it's stud work that's being painted, door frames, windows, casement. If you've got that internal corner that you don't want glue squeeze on, put some MS polymer adhesive on it, clamp the joint together. That'll prevent the PU glue from squeezing in that direction and also provides a perfect sealant to then clean off and get a perfectly corked internal corner that you can then paint over. So really, really helped me and improved the quality of my joinery and sped up the process as well. So hopefully you'll like this tip and uh, I'll get a thumbs up.